welcome to the Gita Brown Show, bringing harmony into everyday life. I love creativity and I love wellness, and I've been teaching both for 30 years. To be creative, it's helpful if you have a lifestyle that supports your wellness, because that's where creativity starts. My philosophy is simple and based in yoga tradition. Simple practices done daily over a long period of time will naturally lead you to a lifestyle full of wellness, and from there, your creativity can flow. So you could think of today's show like a little mini class with me and my special guest teacher, Miss Sarah Gilbert. We're going to talk about how to use breath to calm your mind. We're going to talk a little bit of sort of philosophy and ways to think about breathing a little bit, but it's going to be all about the practice today. Because I had Miss Sarah Gilbert on a previous episode, I believe it was episode number four, and she was such a colossal hit and inundated with messages and people asking us more about the breath and to share her story with anxiety that I thought, we got to bring her back on again. So for those of you who didn't catch that episode, check it out. It's episode number four of the Gita Brown Show. I highly recommend it. You do a little more of a deeper dive into your story of anxiety in that one. (laughs) But for those of you who haven't met the lovely Sarah Gilbert, let me introduce you to her now. She is an absolutely tireless advocate for people with special needs. She's a licensed yoga for the special child practitioner and a licensed yoga spirit practitioner. You also have experience in marketing management and business management. Ooh. And she's a wonderful advocate to her daughter, Macy, who has special needs. She happens to have Down syndrome. And that's actually how we met as I began teaching your daughter yoga many moons ago. So that episode number four was all about having anxiety and how you transformed it through many means, but we also landed on the breath as being that like back pocket tool that people can use. So we're going to go way more into the breathing techniques today, guys. So make sure you're comfortable wherever you are. Even if you're driving, you can do this show today because you can breathe and drive at the same time. In fact, it'll be better than yelling at the person in front of you for not going fast enough. (laughs) So Sarah, really quickly, can you give people just a tiny recap of like your story of anxiety and how you use the breath to sort of pivot things for you a little bit? And then we'll get into teaching some folks some wonderful breathing practices. Sure. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, I'm happy Yay! to be here. Thank you. Woo-hoo, love fest. It's <laughs> over. And now we're moving on. So quick recap. Anxiety. Yes. Tell us anxiety about it. stinks. Yeah, right. It just does not feel good. Yeah. So um yes, as Gita said, I am a wife. I'm a mother of two teenagers. So that in and of itself is anxiety provoking. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. We're like, ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, my daughter, yes, Macy has um She's 13. She was born into a body that happened to have Down syndrome, and that was really tricky for my husband and I when she was first born, and it created – it was kind of the start of the anxiety in me. I didn't know it at the time, Um, but as the years went on, yeah, anxiety started to pretty much take over. Um, Macy and Gita met, started practicing yoga. It will actually be eight years in November. I know, which is – it's amazing. And a few years into Macy and Gita's yoga practice, when I saw that their beautiful connection and the way they were able to work together and the way Macy was able to use yoga and her breath in particular to regulate her body and her emotions, um, it was just mind-boggling to me. I didn't know anything about yoga at the time, really. And um, so as life continued to throw curveballs my way and into my family, um, I needed a way to cope. I needed to really take care of myself so that I could take care of, of my family and my kids. So I turned to yoga. And the one thing that I did find in yoga that I really resonated with the most and that really tackled or helped me tackle my anxiety and to give me ways to cope and to really manage the anxiety was through breath. And I found the best part about breath is that you, like you just said, you can do it anywhere. You can do it anywhere to make yourself feel a little bit more present, a little bit more in control, a little bit, you know, less in that fight or flight feeling that you might have. Um, and it, it all it takes is just a couple of deep breaths. So, Amen. <laughs> we could just say, done, go breathe, people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, As you know, and I've shared with viewers and you many times, I too have had my struggles with anxiety. Perhaps that's why we resonate so well together. And it is so absolutely transformative to start to realize that you have this thing that's with you all the time that you can both observe and manage to shift things a little bit. 
And I think that was the part of that last episode that really sort of blew up for people. I put some little tiny clip, y'all, up on like Facebook. It was some little like 30 second clip of this lady talking. And it just, I would say it exploded, really. <laughs> I think there was, I lost track of the comments. Mm. You were getting private messages. I was getting private messages. And people were going, I had no idea that I could breathe differently please teach me more, mm. right? I was like, I think you and I were both like, wow, this yeah. really resonated. So we wanted to kind of get into the breath a little more because at the end of that last episode, I think I led perhaps three or four deep breaths <laughs> and that was about it. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about it a little bit more. So how this class for you guys is going to work. I'm going to give a little bit of just body stuff about the breath, how it works on the mind, the nervous system, but just a teeny bit so that you understand the theory of the breath because it's nice to have the experience in your body, but our minds love to play with concepts and to understand how things work. And it makes it more likely that we'll actually do it, I think, when we know why. And then Sarah's going to teach uh, a breathing thing. I'm going to give a little clarifications. And then you have a special ratio breath. And I'm going to be her student because I've never done this before. She's never taught me this breath before, too. So I'll be a little role model student for you, I promise. Um, and so we're going to take you through some of that. So that's how it's going to roll, people. So let's get started. So, oh, I skipped something. So sorry. Pause for effect here. I'm going to talk about how the breath works in a minute. Can you back up a little bit, though, and back me up to talk about how anxiety actually manifests? Because some ah. people who might be listening to this might be a little bit interested in figuring out, they think, oh, I don't have anxiety. My kids don't have anxiety. Right. But you and I as yoga teachers, we know that it's at epidemic level proportions. It is one of the number one mental health concerns for people in the U.S. today. Yes. But a lot of times people don't even know that they have it. So briefly, before I give the scientific factolas on breathing, can you talk about how to identify anxiety like in yourself mm -hmm. and then especially in kids? Because I think it's a little different. <clears throat> Sure. Thank you. Yes. Um, so yeah, anxiety for, I, I, I had anxiety. Now that I can recognize the anxiety in myself and I know that's what it is, I look back on my life and I think that I've had anxiety for a good part of my life, but I had no idea. And when I was a kid, um, you know, I would get this pit in my stomach. I would get, um, the, the, the yucky butterfly feeling, like not that first kiss butterfly feeling. It's like mm. yucky. Um, and I would get sweaty palms all the time and I would have racing thoughts, but I didn't know what it was until later on in life. So yes, those are some of the, those are some of the, um, the ways it can manifest. Racing thoughts, um, fear of having this fear that you can't identify, you can't explain. My husband calls it chicken little syndrome when yeah. I start to do yes. it. It's like, this bad thing's going to happen and that thing's going to happen. He's like, whoa, chicken little. Yes. And I recognize now, oh, that's anxiety. That's the racing it's, thoughts. Like, yeah. Everything is horrible. Yes. And every bad everything that's going to happen, happen in the future is horrible. <laughs> yes. Everything that, yeah, yeah, that could possibly, you know, things that... But it, it feels real at the time. It feels very real. Yeah. And um, yes, and it's it's kind of a nasty Just cycle. Side thing. Yes. Telling someone that they are chicken little in that moment is not helpful. No, Thank you. it's not helpful. It's like telling. It's funny later on, but at the time it feels so real. That's right. That like talking to someone who is in that anxious moment or if they're headed towards a panic attack and trying to convince them mm. that it's all in their head, well, that's not exactly useful. Right. And that's where we enter as yoga teachers and we get to the breath. That's right. Does it manifest the same way now in, for you as an adult as it did when you were a kid? Or Oh, yeah. It definitely does. Um, it you know, the difference is now that I can identify it and I can talk about it and explain how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, in kids, you know, I have seen and heard stories about kids who have been in school and um, are identified and labeled by their teachers as possibly having a an attention disorder, like an ADHD or something like that. Some, because the kids will tend to zone out or they'll um, become kind of fidgety in their seats, or they'll get up to go to the bathroom three times during a class, or they'll do all do these things that might look a little bit like attention disorders, if you want, if that's what you want to call it. But in reality, it's actually because they are so ang the kids are so anxious and they don't know why they're feeling the way they are, and they can't they can't they don't know how to calm it within themselves mm. and so rather than try to pay attention it might be too overwhelming whatever's being taught in the class so instead of just try they just zone out and they stare out the window or they get up to escape and go to the bathroom um it it's things like that and they don't know how to talk to somebody about the bad ways that they're feeling because they they don't really understand it mm -hmm. um which is hard but 
Um, but luckily, they can learn how to breathe properly, sitting in their desk at school while the teacher is talking, or you know, or any anywhere they are, and they can just um, help to calm themselves a little bit. That's so helpful because if it's manifesting in different ways, that says to me in that moment when they're zoning out or doing that avoidance behavior, that's total fight or flight response, right. which is what I was going to actually talk about. What a lovely segue, <laughs> as if we planned it. One thing, let yeah, me yeah, add. Please. One of the messages that I did receive after the last episode we um, we did was with a friend of mine um, and whose child was going through a huge amount of transition that, that in her life, mm-hmm. and her father was really worried about her. And he said, so when I started to talk to him a little bit more in depth about breath and how it can work and ways to do it and all that, and he said, oh my gosh, so you mean the other day when my daughter got off the bus and she came home and she was, um, her breath was very ra- kind of raspy and very fast. He said, I could, so that you're telling me I could actually hear her anxiety coming out. Oh, wow. And I said, yeah, you could. And she just doesn't know how to explain it. She just has too much going on in her head and her mm-hmm. mind and her heart and her everything that, but you could, you could hear her anxiety coming out of her breath. Wow. So. I love that. It's like be- listening, mm-hmm. but not to words, but to breathing patterns. Yeah. yeah. And as yoga teachers, we do that all the time. Yes. Ah, pause for a deep (laughs) breath. I love that listening for the anxiety, listening to the pattern of the breath. We're going to talk about that Mm -hmm. actually when we do our own breathing because everyone has their own sort of pattern of breathing and you can start to learn for yourself how how to identify when you're sort of at a neutral place and when that breathing for yourself starts to shift. Mm -hmm. And if you can catch it, ooh, that's when the magic happens. So in that moment, like when she got off the bus, she was totally in what we would call a fight or flight mode, right? That's like that primitive part of your brain that was there to tell you that you're being chased by something that is going to eat you and Mm -hmm. it fires and basically shuts down all rational cognition. It takes blood away from your extremities because it wants to protect your heart and your internal organs, which is why you get like the cold hands. It can make you a little bit sweaty. If you think of it back in the day, you wanted to be a little sweaty to elude capture, right? Someone grabs onto you and you're sweaty. So that has a very real function in the body. However, in modern times, being in a fight or flight situation, when you're in a classroom or you're sitting in a podcasting studio, (laughs) is not necessarily useful. So we need to shift that sort of hyperactive state of the nervous system to switching what we call the parasympathetic nervous system on. And it's one we yoga teachers talk about all the time, the parasympathetic nervous system. (gasps) Ah, because when that's switched on, then your body goes into this restful mode. It starts to digest food. Cognition switches back on. And we know that breath is one of the number one ways that you can literally flip that switch. Here's the thing, though, is if you wait until the horse is out of the barn and you're in a truly anxious moment when just like the you-know-what has hit the fan... It's kind of a little too late unless I would say you're a very experienced yoga practitioner, right? Or have a lot of experience in any breath tradition. When you're first starting to train the breath, probably better to do it at a time when you're a little more relaxed, right? Yes. <laughs> or if you're a parent, like don't wait until your kid comes off the bus and is like, <laughs> <laughs> to then be like, well, let's try some deep breathing now. <laughs> like it's not a great time. Yeah. Like I found for me, and I don't know for you, like resetting my breath and my baseline for anxiety happened in moments when I was not anxious. Yes. And strengthening that, then gradually, like, sort of, I would always call it, like, lowering, like, the waves. Like, the waves of anxiety used to go, like, way up and then way down and way up and way down. In those more down moments when I trained, it would pull down the height of the overall wave. So, wave, you know, it would kind of just yeah. slowly lower the whole thing. It's kind of like strengthening what's already good, making that stronger, makes the other stuff fall away. Mm. Did you have an experience like that? Oh, yeah. Um, Through breath. Yeah. Mm. I think of it when you pour a can of soda into a glass really, really fast and you get tons and tons of foam. And as the foam kind of recedes and it and then it, you know, and it ends and it and then and then all the foam is gone and it kind of I don't know. I feel that's just the way I kind Mm. of picture it in my body because I get this whole feeling inside. And when I breathe, I can slowly just feel it just cool. Yeah. Until it's. ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some people. Uh, yes. And that's a really great point because everyone experiences the breath differently. Right. Some people, and today when we do some of these, y- y'all might feel like super anxious just taking a deep breath. Mm-hmm. That's normal. Some of you might feel instant relief. 
that's normal. Some of you might be breathing a lot more shallowly. Is that a word? But yeah. more shallow than, than we direct. That's normal too. Like it's so unique to everybody, the depth of your breath, mm -hmm. your experience with the breath, your journey, how it feels, is it bubbles? It doesn't matter. It's going to be unique and personal to every single person. So know that about yourself. You don't always have to match what someone else is doing. Or when we teach you these things, you don't have to match our breath. Uh, you be you. You be you. You let your breath be be its its sort of own guide. I think your own breath and body teaches you how to breathe. And so that listening to anxiety, it's kind of the same thing, listening to your breath. So if the breath is personal, it's unique to you, that also means you have full, like, I don't know, what would you call it, permission to stop anytime, mm -hmm. right? Like if right. you take a deep breath and you get super lightheaded, I tell people in my yoga class, I'm like, well, just stop doing that for a minute. And they're like, oh, really? I can? I'm not like a bad <laughs> student. It's like, yeah, just relax. Yeah. It takes time, right. right? And to be patient. So anytime when I'm teaching you a breath or Sarah teaches you the breathing ratio, if you get like a little weird, lightheaded, or even it provokes some anxiety, it's fine. Yeah. Just relax. Please stop. Please yes. stop. Please don't make yourself <laughs> feel worse. Yeah, because that's actually yeah. information to have. It's right. like, okay, something's happening. Maybe you're dehydrated. You right. can sleep well. It's bringing some stuff up for you that just needs a little time to be processed. Who knows? You just kind of experiment over time right. and let it gradually work. Um, I don't know. Anything else you want to say about the science-y stuff before you actually teach us how to take a deep breath? That's I don't think so. That's enough for today. Yeah. I could go science geek all day, so I will stop that. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah's going to teach us just sort of how to take a deep breath, maybe align us a little bit so we're seated well, and then uh, then I'll take over again in a minute. But Sarah, take it away. Okay. Show us how to take a deep breath. Okay. So, so a lot of this we've already mentioned before. You want to be sure that you're in a comfortable position. Um, if you are driving in the car, stay conscious of the road in front of you, <laughs> but still kind of get comfortable, kind of, you know, loosen up your shoulders a little bit. You want to try to have as, your spine as straight as possible um, and, yeah, and just try to be as calm as possible. Um, if you can, if you're not driving in a car, close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Sometimes that's not so comfortable, especially when you first begin um, this this whole process of learning how to breathe. And so what you are going to do, you're going to picture your stomach as a balloon. And you're going to very slowly and steadily, as possible as for you, take a deep breath in through your nose. And as you breathe in, you're going to inflate that balloon all the way until no more air can get into that balloon in your stomach. And then slowly, at your own rate, exhale through your nose and deflate that balloon. Take another inhale in through your nose, inflate that balloon, and exhale through your nose, Letting all the air out of the balloon as slowly and steadily as you can. And again, your inhales and exhales will be your own at your own rate, whatever is most comfortable for you. Ideally, you would want to start with at least three to four repetitions of this breath. but you can do as many as you need or as few as you need. I think if we just did this for half an hour, the world would be healed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. So thank you. You're I feel welcome. like I took a several Valium and they had instant <laughs> effect. Sometimes uh, too, picturing, ooh. having something to visualize yes. um, as you're breathing. Yeah. Helpful. Um, is it can be helpful, and obviously it can be anything that works for you. Might not be a balloon, yeah. maybe you know anything. Yeah. But having a visual to link with the breath can be helpful. Yeah, beautiful. That's that one is especially great for kids. For kids I've used too. It with adults all yes. the time. So to clarify for people, also if you try to take that deep breath and you're like, my abdomen isn't moving at all, you know, your lungs fill up with 
oxygen. Mm-hmm. Yay. O2. We love you, O2. And when that happens, your main uh, muscle of respiration, which is your diaphragm, which attaches at the bottom of your ribs, and it goes all the way through to the back. You could picture it like sort of like a big donut, except it doesn't have a hole. What's that? A cruller? <laughs> right there. And that muscle... The diaphragm actually pulls down, and as it does so, it displaces the internal organs, right? Because we, y'all know you're not breathing into your stomach, right? <laughs> like, that would be odd to put oxygen into your kidneys. So the lungs are in, well, actually what happens, the diaphragm pulls down, which creates a vacuum in your lungs, which is really cool. That vacuum actually then, the atmosphere itself, wants to equalize the pressure, because the atmosphere senses that there's a vacuum there, and let's allows the air to rush into the lungs, which is kind of cool. We all think that we are breathing in and it's effortful, but actually what's occurring is when your diaphragm pulls down, you're actually making space in the body, which creates a vacuum and the atmosphere goes, I must equalize that pressure and just allows the oxygen to rush in. And when that occurs for most of us, as she said, the belly sort of feels like it's inflating or like goes out. That's just your internal organs displacing because you got that big old crawler of a diaphragm pushing down and bloop, everything pushes out. But what if you're sitting there and your belly didn't go out? Mm. Interesting. I see this all the time. We've all seen this breath. Don't try this one at home. Just listen. You go like this. (sighs) (sighs) If you tell a fifth grader to take a deep breath, that's usually what they do. (sighs) They pull their shoulders up, their chest puffs up and their belly goes in this. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a deep breath. And a lot of my fifth grade students, wow, I feel totally messed up now. (laughs) A lot of my fifth grade students say, I thought that was taking a deep breath. It's like, whoa, that's actually what we in yoga parlance and physical therapists would call reverse breathing. And for some of you, if you're a dancer, I see this with cheerleaders, figure skaters, anything where you have to keep your abdomen really tight to do your job in your art form, a lot of times that can constrict that natural ballooning out of the abdomen that Sarah so lovely discussed. So that's normal if you've trained as a cheerleader, as a dancer, figure skater. They tend to hold themselves really tight here. That's fine. That's awesome. So, however, if you're someone who hasn't trained in those modalities and you found like your belly was going in when you're breathing in, you're just doing a little bit of reverse breathing there. It's no problem. There's nothing to worry about. If you slowly and gradually just take a few deep breaths when you wake up in the morning, a few in bed at night, relax, I think is the key to sort of reverse that. Relax. The more you relax, your body will begin to remember how it breathed when you were a baby. Because hmm. very few, some preemies are born with some breathing stuff, but most of us are born breathing properly. Most animals, if you have pets at home, when you watch them breathing, their belly goes in and it goes down, it goes in. It goes out and it goes in. So that, just be patient with yourself. If you found your belly going in when she was saying to breathe in and you're like this and then you breathe out and everything goes out, whoa, it's something to notice, right? Mm -hmm. And just be even more relaxed in your practice. Mm -hmm. And I'd say just do it laying down maybe. And just over time, that reverse breathing will correct itself. And I know you actually have had Mm -hmm. cases and your daughter where you've reversed breathed. (laughs) <laughs> and you just patiently let it yes. kind of normalize, just through awareness. Right. Okay. I'll talk more about reverse breathing in a future podcast, but I wanted to give that out there in case some of you are like, but wait, my body didn't do that. So Sarah's going to teach us a ratio breath right now. Sure. Yay. Yes. I'm so excited. I've never done this. So teach me something new, teach you. All Let's right. Go. So it's very similar to what we just did, but we are going to um, just monitor the time of our inhale. And then when, when you have inhaled everything you can, we're going to hold it. Hold your breath just for a couple seconds, and then you're going to exhale just as slowly. So it's going to be just like we just did with a very slow through your nose, a very slow and steady inhale through your nose, and then we'll hold it for a count. So we'll inhale to a count of four, we'll hold for a count of three, and exhale to a count of five. And you can alter that, though, any way that's best for you. Maybe you you can't hold it for as long as I'm counting, and that's okay. That's okay. We don't want anybody fainting yes. or getting lightheaded or yes. dizzy. Due to your point of comfort, that's always. Right. Yes. Cool. I'm ready. So again, get yourselves into a comfortable seated position, and just sit quietly for a moment, and just notice your breath. Breathe in and breathe out. And on your next inhale, you're going to inhale for a count of four. So inhale one, two, three, 
four, and now hold your breath for one, two, three, and exhale slowly and steadily for one, two, three, four, five. Inhale to a count of four, one, two, three, four, and hold for a count of three, one, two, three, and exhale for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And you can continue this breath for as long as it feels good for you. Notice the difference in the way your body now feels after controlling your breath a little bit, but getting full inhales and full exhales. <sighs> Do I have to talk now? <laughs> <laughs> so amazing thing that that breathing technique does is that it regulates the length of the exhale and the exhale is the thing that triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And most people, we take a deep breath in and then we never fully exhale. And we never fully exhale, that means you never get another full inhale. And so it's like that anxiety piles on top of anxiety, it piles on top of anxiety because you're never actually fully yes. <sighs> exhaling. Both symbolically, like energy, stress, thoughts, emotions, but also you're just not simply replacing and replenishing the oxygen in your body. And so then you wonder why you feel like a little muddled or something like that. They do yeah. say when when I was taught this sort of, they call it ratio breathing, the exhale should always be, try to make it longer mm. than the inhale or what you hold your breath for, for that very reason. Yeah. yeah. And that full exhale then allows you to just take that refresh breath in and that's when you really yes. start to feel the benefits. So as we head towards wrapping up, I want to give people like an idea, like how to practice this. They're like, well, great. I just did that breathing and that breathing, but like, what do I do in everyday life? Mm. I would tell people first thing when you wake up in the morning and you're laying there in bed, yes. notice, do exactly what Sarah taught you people, do your homework. <laughs> notice your breath first, just check out where it's at. Mm -hmm. And then just start with the balloon breath. If that's new for you, once the balloon breath gets comfortable, maybe add the ratio breathing. Mm -hmm. And then do the same thing in bed at night, just for a couple of minutes. Yep. It's just for Would a couple you minutes. Say anything else or? That's in, in the, and that's the thing that um, I think makes it most doable for people and it doesn't mm -hmm. seem as overwhelming yeah. and as a chore, but you, it literally can take 90 seconds for you to reset yeah. your feeling of anxiety or your feeling, you know, just any sort of feeling that you're having inside. Yeah. It, it can just, it's just like a little reset button. Yeah. I love it. Boop. Reset with the breath. Yes. And it's amazing too, is the benefits accrue over time. Right. So you just, if, even if you think of putting five cents in, like two minutes of breathing is five cents, well, like do that every day over 10 years. Mm. You have a lot in your savings bank. You've reduced your overall sort of baseline for stress and anxiety. You've gotten more in tune with your breath, your body, your breathing patterns. You have a critical skill you can use then when you need it and before you need it. And improves your overall health because more oxygen is always good for your body. Yes. Oh, and when you awesome. feel it in yourself as, as a parent or a teacher yeah. or a counselor or a whoever, yeah. you, and once you feel it for yourself, you feel how really good it can feel. You can pass that along to your friends or your kids or anybody yes. else who might benefit from it. You said something crucial there. Practice yourself first before doing this for other people. Yes. Don't just listen to this podcast and then go to your husband. You know, you should really breathe. I'm going to show you this thing. Like, <laughs> practice yourself because then people see the benefits. Mm -hmm. Then they will ask you, be like, so what are you doing? You seem a little more chill these days. And yeah. then you can share the information. Before you go off teaching anyone to breathe, make sure you can do it yourself first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> practice, practice, practice yourself first. So my friends, if you listen to this today, we really want to hear about how they're doing, right? Absolutely. So I'm going to tell you, hop on over to GeetaBrown.com. Underneath this show, you can drop a comment right there. Ask us questions that you have. Let us know challenges. What bubbled up for you? What, what is confusing? What do you need help with? Like we're both teachers. We want to teach you. Yes. And we can only do that if they talk to us. So drop a comment over at GeetaBrown.com. Let us know how it's going. And more specifically, because you have homework, homework bell. Your homework is to let us know when you're going to practice one or two of these breaths, either the balloon breath or the ratio breathing. Let us know, are you going to do it uh, when you first wake up, 
before bed? Are you going to do it both times? Let us know your plan because by having a plan and us watching you will hold you more accountable, then you'll actually do it. And then you'll feel better and you'll overall baseline for stress will go down and your health will improve and everything will be better. And we'll be like so happy because we'll be able to tell when we see them. We'll be like, yes. you are glowing. You'll say it's all that extra oxygen. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to close with a chant for peace. Yay. Yay. This is a chant for peace that was taught to me by my teachers in the integral yoga tradition. We'll do it in the original Sanskrit first, just to give that nice vibration of peace and love. And I'll give you the English translation afterwards. We chant with me. Yes, of Thank course. Thank you, Miss Sarah. <laughs> Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Which means may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Thank you so much, Sarah, for coming Thank on today. Thank you for having me. Everybody go out there and breathe. Let us know how it's going over at gitabrown.com. We want to see you there. Take a nice deep breath in. Have a peaceful day, my friends. Om Shanti. Peace to you. Peace.